LAPD 1976, when I came on the shotgun, it was mo uh, Ithaca Model 37. They're terrible shotguns. I hated those things. Uh, it loads and uh, ejects from under, underneath uh, the underside of the receiver grouping. Uh, there's no ejection port off to the side like you have on an 870, which is a good pump actuated shotgun. Problem with the Model 37s that we had is this. You had this five point safety check. In other words, every time you took the shotgun out, you had to undo the locking nut, you took the barrel off, you inspected the barrel, because some guys would stick cigars in the thing, if you can believe that. How rare. And then you had to check the safety, and then you check the firing pin. So you depress it and bolt forward. You put your finger right over the uh, the firing pin hole. You'd press, and I tell you what, that thing hurt because it came out, you know, fairly hard with some substantial force. Not a big thing, but you know, snap it. Okay. And then you check all your your uh, your uh, you'd check the ejector, you check the extractor, and so forth. And so you basically five point safety check, and then you put the thing back together. Well. The shotguns were almost never fired. They were so worn, though, from doing the five-point safety check that they were looser than a goose. Uh, the front sights were this plastic, kind of an orange, opaque uh, bead, kind of a, in a pyramidal fashion. Uh, those things are almost always broken off. The stocks were slick as hell. I mean, you might as well put oil on them. The shoulder, the, uh, the butt pad on the things were so worn uh, because they would sit in a shotgun rack <coughs> with the barrel pointed toward the, the driver's side, underneath the driver's legs. And so when the passenger officer got out, he could take it out. And uh, so your, your back of your calf on your right side was always up against not only the, the shotgun stock itself, but also against the butt pad. So they got really, really worn. They got very, very smooth. And you put it up on a wool shirt and you just slide all over the place. Um, I never liked the Model 37. I think we finally got, you know, we finally got rid of them, transitioned to the 870s. Um, I don't know where those Model 37s were, but I know they were selling them at the Academy for the astounding price of like 67 bucks or something, trying to get rid of them. I should have picked one up. I didn't, just for nostalgic purposes. But uh, yeah, the Ithaca Model 37, I was never a big fan of. Um, I, it's great as a bird gun, but for tactical, trying to reload that thing, uh, if you went dry, you had to put the action forward, you had to load around, and then you had to action release and then chamber all over again, or press the trigger on an empty chamber, which would be iffy at best if you weren't paying attention to detail, obviously, and then work the action. Whereas an 870, you go dry, it's just straight to the rear, you know, off, in, boom, back up, just like that. Uh, and the Ithaca is just, it wasn't really user friendly. Uh, Remington 870, a lot more user friendly. That's my preference in terms of a pump actuated shotgun. So those are model 37s and the old five point check. Every time you took it out of the kit room, you did the five point check. You got your five rounds, a double lot. We didn't have slugs back then. Five rounds, double lot. Uh, and you kept those on you and then you'd load them. Uh, and uh, four rounds would be going into the uh, magazine, no, none of the chamber. Uh, that was administrative load. So if you got out of the vehicle, then you had to chamber around, and then if you didn't obviously discharge it, which is very infrequently you discharge it, and then you had to download it, reload it, and then put it back in the rack, lock it down, and you'd keep a key inside that, because uh, both of you had two sets of keys. You had the driver and passenger both had sets of keys. So you'd take the shotgun key and you put it in the lock, so it was there all the time. And the wor you know, worst thing you can do is try it with your partner going 90 miles an hour, balls to the wall, and he's slam you know, in and out of traffic, slamming you back and forth, and you're trying to find your keys, dropping them, if they get wedged in between the bracket for the shotgun and the seat, you're never going to find those things. It's Murphy's Law personified. So you would keep the key in there, and then every time you got out, you just take the shotgun key rack out and put it, you know, in your pants uh, trouser pocket, and then exit the vehicle and come back in, and boom. So you just got used to that. You got kind of used to that whole uh, methodology of how you would always keep that shotgun at the ready. Um, never had to use it. Uh, and when we qualified back then, sometimes you'd come out and you'd actually lock it into your side and you'd fire from down here, sometimes from the shoulder. You know, um, the sights, as I said, uh, it was, it just the sights were abysmal. Um, nothing like what they have today. Ghost ring sights and now you have the small micro dots on them with the Picatinny rail. None of that stuff was around back then in the 70s. It was just a straightforward shotgun. It was basically a bird gun that they claimed was a police model and that was it. And uh, that was my experience with the Ithaca Model 37, circa 1976 LAPD.